Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about aortic dissection, the classification, clinical presentation, diagnosis and management. To be able to talk about aortic dissection, I would like to quickly recap the histology of the aorta in two sentences. The aorta has three major layers. The tunica intima, the tunica media, and the tunica adventitia. The tunica intima is a single cell layer of flat endothelial cells, so it is the innermost layer, while the tunica media is a quite thick layer, which is comprised of smooth muscle cells as well as elastic fibers. The thickest and most outer layer, the tunica adventitia, holds the vasa vasorum as well as some nerves and loose connective tissue. Vasa vasorum is basically blood vessels that supply the aorta, so the blood vessels of the blood vessel. Let's now talk about aortic dissection. In an aortic dissection, these layers that we just talked about get basically separated and blood accumulates inside the wall of the aorta, and as you know, the aorta is a huge blood vessel and really important for the blood supply of the whole body. Usually in most cases, the blood accumulates in between the tunica intima and the tunica media. So it is basically like having a hematoma, but in the aorta. This creates a false lumen because lots of blood flows through the aorta and by that more and more blood accumulates in the vessel wall and the length of the dissection usually becomes longer quite quickly. You can also see an illustration of this process on the poster. The length of the aortic dissection can be as little as just one millimeter or as long as several centimeters. The length of the aortic dissection depends on the blood pressure and also on the pressure resistance of the aorta. The pressure inside the false lumen is quite high, as the space is quite narrow, so over time it can happen that the space of the aortic dissection is actually larger than the space of the actual true aorta. In more rare cases, it is also possible that the vessel supplying the aorta, so the vasa vasorum, rupture leading to a blood accumulation between the tunica adventitia and the tunica media. How does aortic dissection happen? In most patients, an aortic dissection happens after having arterial hypertension for many years, so a high blood pressure predisposes for aortic dissection. Other risk factors are having a connective tissue disorder such as Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Other risk factors are having atherosclerosis, inflammatory changes in the wall of the blood vessel, a bicuspid aortic valve, or for example surgeries as an intra-aortic balloon pump. Around 75% of cases occur in patients between 40 and 70 years of age, the highest peak is in the age group of 50 to 65 year old patients. Men are three times more commonly affected. How do patients with an aortic dissection present? This depends on the nature of the aortic dissection. It is possible to experience an acute or chronic aortic dissection. Patients with a chronic aortic dissection are often asymptomatic. The more commonly seen picture is however that of an acute aortic dissection. In this case, patients usually experience a suddenly occurring severe pain in the chest. It is also possible that the pain occurs in the neck or the jaw. This would indicate that also the ascending aorta is affected. In other cases, patients experience pain in the back and in the abdomen, which indicates that a descending aorta is affected. Most patients will also have hypertension. In some cases, however, 
the aortic trunk is affected, which can lead to hypotension. A quite reliable indicator is that in many patients there will be a difference between the blood pressure of the right and the left arm. A difference of over 20 mm mercury indicates an aortic dissection. Other symptoms are neurologic deficits, depending on which branches of the aorta are affected. If, for example, the arteria carotis communis is affected, patients usually experience a stroke or stroke-like symptoms. If the renal artery is affected, patients often present with anuria and acute kidney failure. Also, ischemia of the extremities with numbness and cyanosis is possible. Really important to keep in mind is that with an aortic dissection, the integrity of this huge vessel is impaired. In many patients, a aortic dissection leads to a rupture of the aorta in a really short time. Unfortunately, an acute aortic dissection is lethal within 48 hours in around 50% of patients that present with an acute aortic dissection. How can we diagnose an aortic dissection? We can use the aortic dissection detection risk score that helps us to determine the risk factors that a patient has. We can also take a blood sample and measure the levels of D-dimer and biochemical markers. Usually a negative D-dimer and the increased level of MYH11 in the blood suggests an aortic dissection. MYH11 stands for Smooth Muscle Myosin Heavy Chain 11, a protein that can indicate that a patient has a hereditary increase of the risk to develop an aortic dissection. Other ways to diagnose an aortic dissection are by imaging techniques. We can use a CT scan or a CT angiography for the diagnosis, where the dissection can usually be visualized. Important is here to not only make a CT scan of the thorax, but also of the abdomen and pelvic area, as the dissection may be located further distally. In an aortic dissection, we can often see the beak sign. Here we can see a sharp angle at the edge of the false lumen, which is formed by the blood flowing into the wall of the artery. It is also often possible to see the co web sign in an aortic dissection. This is when basically in the dissection there are remnants of the tunica media, which forms tissue strands across the aortic dissection. Chronic aortic dissections often look thicker in imaging techniques. Chronic aortic dissections are those that last for longer than three months. An acute aortic dissection will usually lead to symptoms immediately or longest in up to two weeks. Important is also to differentiate a true and a false lumen. A true lumen will eventually drain into the normal artery. They are also often smaller than a false lumen, which we can see in an aortic dissection. How can we classify an aortic dissection? In clinical practice, the Stanford classification is mostly used to classify aortic dissections. In this classification, we divide them into type A and type B. A type A aortic dissection starts in every aspect of the aorta proximally to the left subclavian artery. In a type B aortic dissection, the aortic dissection starts distally to the left subclavian artery. The type A aortic dissection is connected to a higher rate of mortality than the type B dissection. How can we treat an aortic dissection? For both types of aortic dissection, it is really important to control the blood pressure. This is usually done with beta blockers. Also in both cases, patients usually receive some kind of pain relievers. Specific for a type A aortic dissection, 
is that usually in acute cases we have to make an emergency surgery. There are different surgeries depending on which area of the aorta is affected and whether or not the patient has Marfan syndrome. We basically divide the surgical approach into either an open heart surgery or the less invasive endovascular surgery. In the open heart surgery, the surgeon will make an incision in the area where the dissection is located. So for a type A, usually the sternum will have to be opened to get access to the heart and the area proximal to the subclavian artery. A bypass machine is usually used during the duration of the surgery. The aortic dissection is then repaired with a synthetic graft. The damaged part of the aorta is basically reconstructed with a synthetic material. In the endovascular surgery, the aorta is basically repaired from inside the blood vessel. Also here a synthetic material is used. It can be either a metal or a polyester graft that will be introduced through the femoral artery in the leg. To find the exact location of the aortic dissection, usually a contrast medium and x-ray imaging is used. The recovery after both surgeries is usually quite long. The patient usually stays in the hospital for at least one month after the repair of the aortic dissection. A chronic type A aortic dissection can be monitored closely and the surgery can be planned in advance. In a chronic aortic dissection, with the following criteria, we also usually make a surgery. Those are the involvement of the descending aorta exceeding 5.5 cm, if there is a growth of the dissected area of more than 5 mm in 6 months, if there is an imminent aortic rupture, or the pain is unresponsive to pain therapy. In a type B aortic dissection, we can usually monitor the patient and help them with conservative therapy. Indications for a surgery in a type B aortic dissection are if there is a mesenteric, renal or limb ischemia, if the patient experiences hemodynamic instability, or if the aortic dissection ruptures. What are complications of an aortic dissection? The most severe complication is that the aortic dissection might rupture, leading to severe internal bleeding. Other complications include organ damage, such as kidney or intestinal damage, and a myocardial infarction or stroke. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.